some technicians, and somewhere in the world somebody develops a, a new technology, and most of the time people are redoing what other labs are doing. And most of the time they are unsuccessful because the information, the knowledge behind scientific discovery is not stored, it's not shared, it's not uh, uh, translated into a usable technology. So the question here is, what is knowledge? And knowledge applied to development, knowledge applied to scientific discovery, and it mostly by medical sciences applies to all the steps that are involved. I mean, just think about how uh, laboratory notebooks are used. I mean, everybody takes notes or raw data in their own manner. I mean, there are some standards out there related to patents, but not a lot. Is it a matter of a system? How is the lab organized? How, how are um, experiments planned? Is it a matter of skill? How are skills trained? How are these not the knowledge about skill? How, how are they passed from one person to the next one? So there are a lot of issues that come into knowledge, and, but, but also how the, the, the labs design. What are the parameters critical for the lab? How are the parameters maintained? How do you organize the workspace, the workflow? Uh, lots of things that, that have a great impact into the scientific discovery process. Or just data. I mean, the data basically is just one of the points throughout the whole uh, development process, the scientific discovery process. How is the data obtained? How robust is the data? How um, reliable is the data that you have? Why is it so that most of the people that try to replicate a scientific publications aren't able to do so in the world? Is it wrong data or is it just not poorly characterized? And how is the data exposed? How is the data presented to the public? How is this data converted into knowledge? That's something we are not addressing enough nowadays in the world, at least in our field. And I think you are much more advanced than that, but in biomedical sense, that's something that still remains to be addressed. You like it or not, what you see here is the way knowledge is regarded as uh, and represented uh, in research. Papers are the, um, the instruments of sharing knowledge. And the more of these you have, the better chances you have to have a good uh, position somewhere in the academy or in the industry. And the question is, how many scientific publications can a certain scientist go through? And the other one is, how many does he want to proceed? Or do we have, or should we have, or should we design newer ways of representative information? And here is where we have to work with other fields and, and, and to make ourselves the question, how do human brains store information or the knowledge that we have? Do we really think that we use only words and sentences to explain the complexity out there um, what we feel, what we experience, what we know, what we say is knowledge. The question is, how, what, what tools do we have? I mean, we can convert text into tables. And there's something very important I, I learned today from, from uh, Andres. And uh, he said something about knowledge is, lies between the interaction of, of people, between the nodes of the network. And here applies the same. I mean, knowledge is the relation between the different figures out there. And we have many different ways of showing the knowledge or showing the data, but we don't have many ways of showing and uh, describing the knowledge that is behind those data. And we have to do things to standardize the way we do data presentation and the way we retrieve the knowledge from the data. But I would like to show you a little movie that was done by Professor Vettel from the University of Berlin when I was studying there a few years ago. And just so that you can try to imagine how difficult it would be, or it is, to explain the complexity of living processes out there. So, oh. this is a very nice, nice uh, work, and, and the few people of you who work in this field uh, would recognize automatically. This movie is showing the uh, complex processes of here translating DNA into RNA, the, the messenger. RNA that later on is used to uh, code for uh, proteins. We are inside the cell nucleus and you, you are seeing very
clearly how the DNA is passing through a protein complex and the RNA is synthesized. Just imagine, I mean, here we see the, the RNA being exported out of the nucleus to where the proteins are produced. What you see here, what this appears to be very clear, and, and, and you will probably, when you hear about DNA and, and protein synthesis later on in your life, and you will probably think about this movie because it's very nice. I mean, you can see there the reading process starting and how the proteins are exported into the plasmatic reticulum. It is, makes very clear you are experiencing science, and, and you are probably remembering this much better than what is possible, possible with other R tools. And um, I think uh, the time is uh, a little bit short. Uh, okay. So um, this is just one of the tools to, to, to uh, uh, present information and transfer it to the knowledge, because your brain is probably made to think and remember in three-dimensional uh, concepts. And here you see the this, this, uh, uh, trying to represent the three-dimensional structure of the proteins. Um, so what we need, what we need is to rethink how good research and development is performed. We should define a system to do, uh, to make, make more efficient the whole process of uh, research and development in biomedical sciences. We are wasting a lot of time, we are wasting a lot of resources, and both of, the, of, both of these are not readily available. And the only thing I would like to finish hoping is that the new generation of uh, scientists will have it much uh, easier in the future to produce in a more, much, much more efficient way. Thank you very much.